facts about monkeys. Monkey facts. <laughs> Welcome to this epic disaster. Welcome. How are you? Good. Welcome to Weird Facts with Sherry. All of everything you have is weird. I mean, is that rude? Should I have said that? Yeah. No. I mean, yes. N no, it's not rude. Yes, you should have said it. Okay, because I did say it. Also, you. you're burning incense, and we have an incense burner, and you're burning the incense outside of the incense burner. I'm in burning the, the incense from the small incense burner right. uh, that was left over from last time. We have such entertaining ways of starting our show. We really don't. <laughs> you know, I uh, my wife had uh, bron not bronchitis, uh, pneumonia. I know. And it was like, it started as a cough, and then it turned into bronchitis, and then it turned into pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this, I think, last week, that I could actually catch it, and I didn't realize that I could catch pneumonia. Yeah. I think I got it. I think I got it, and I'm kind of concerned. Are you just being hypochondriac? No. Uh, for three days, I've had this lung thing, and coughing, and throat clearing, and all that. And so i got to be careful in the show. I'm okay. not, I don't want to cough. Please but don't. I, I could feel... I used to get bronchitis regularly because of allergies, uh -huh. and that went away when I moved here, and so I haven't Which done Which is pretty that. great. I know. Yeah. So I haven't had a problem for a little while, Uh huh. but this uh, this started a, a couple of days ago, two or three, maybe day, two and a half days, three days ago, I started feeling something. You know, you uh -oh. feel scratchy throat, yes. something in the lungs, and, yes. and yeah. So oh, it's sorry. uh and we were supposed to go to a show tonight and we didn't because I wasn't feeling well and as it turns out big storm happened so it's probably good that we didn't we were going to drive up to Chattanooga mm -hmm. and so um didn't get to do that so we're just we're just chilling in the studio tonight chilling in the studio I've got some soup uh downstairs uh -huh. um for my wife is gone yes she I'm not telling you where she is she's gone she's not here she's not She's physically here. not here. Right. She's actually on the way to Minnesota. So You just um, said you weren't going to say. <laughs> said I wasn't going to tell you, but you already know. Oh. So she's on the way to Minnesota. And so I'm I'm bacheloring it here for a few days. Mm -hmm. Just a few. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to make some soup. And I put in some soup downstairs. Should I get the soup on? Yeah, cooking? I can smell it. You're welcome to have some if you want. I but don't if know. You, even if you do, even if you don't. I do think that we should crack open a beer. Well, I mean, it's it's past time. You're normally like, get the beer open. As soon as we start, you got to open the beer. Yeah, now this is a weird, I won't say it's a weird beard. It's not a weird beard. It's, it's pretty. It's interesting because it's like champagne. It's got a cork. It's, some, a, it's some, like a champagne bottle and it's got a cork. Some beers have corks. I know. So, uh, and I saw it and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. So I, I got this. All right. And I know you're not drinking much. No, but I'm interested to try diet. this. I, I, I'm interested to read it first. Well, listen, well, be careful. You're going to burn yourself on the inside. Oh. So let's tell people what we got here. Okay. This says, this is uh, Omegang. Omegang? No idea. Don't know. Uh, brewery uh, from uh, Cooperstown, New York. They've been around for a hot minute, it looks like. Um, this beer is called Three Philosophers. Yeah. And it is 98 percent quadruple ale which a quadruple is pretty good i mean i like it really yeah and then two percent ale with cherries added that's what i mean the description of the flavors it's just interesting. interesting okay so it does have instructions instructions for drinking the beer well for pouring the beer oh okay uh, doug would be proud it well, says, the, now the bottle itself is brown. Yes, it is. You can't and, see. So I can't see what. Color, so it's going to be a surprise to see what color comes out. Like, what do you think? Well, you want to guess because it has. It's a cherry. Do you think it's going to have like a red tint to it? Maybe a bit, but it is a quadruple, so it will be a a, a dark honey color. Okay. Dark honey color, not like dark like brown ale, uh -huh. but um, okay, a deep honey. Yeah, I can kind of see through it. So the the uh, the instructions here say. Pour slowly as to not disturb the yeast sediment, oh. but with enough vigor to create a luxurious head and release the rich bouquet. You want a bigger head, don't you? Bigger I mean, head? I'm, I, there's so, there's so just, many jokes. Yeah, we. That's <laughs> always a setup that neither of us need to take. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so I'm this just is, noticing that there's. I can't tell. I don't know that my glass has been cleaned well it looks like it has so There's it's like look at that i'm not bottom. done see yet that? are you i see it it's, i see you i see you going on the glass that's I, I it's been through the dishwasher okay 9.7 percent alcohol where did you get this i didn't you pulled, pulled it, it out. 
Jesus, how old are you? No, I'm trying to think because there it was in the dishwasher. Maybe it was last night it was in the dishwasher. It didn't clean it very well. I'm going to drink it anyway, though. Oh, dear God. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to read this, but not until after we pour. So. All right. So so um, let's see how this thing comes off like that. Like that. It just comes right off. So you're gonna you're you're not having much. No, nope. due to my diet, I'm not having much. Look at that. That's not what I thought. The color. You're having more than you normally have. Because it sounds really, really good. I know. It's very and it's you actually also much, got a huge bottle of it. It's it's very it's much darker than I thought it was gonna be. We were just careful, saying that it careful. wasn't gonna be careful, that's gonna be all head. It said to have a vigorous head. That's way too vigorous of a head. Look how it's fallen down. That's awesome. He, he's easily amused, folks. But it's going to sit there forever, and you're not going to be able to drink it. So? Tap the side of the Maybe glass. I like it that way. Shut up. Okay. Um, we should so, take a picture of the bottle. We will. Uh, maybe put it. No, because we can get that. Anyway. Isn't this the... <laughs> don't you people love listening to this? No. This is just the I, best part I think ever every time. of I think any every time podcast. they listen to the podcast, they're like, this is the last time I'm listening I'm, to this. I'm never listening to and this then, podcast again. And then a week later, they're like, oh, I'm bored. Might as well pull it out and listen to it again. And they're like, okay, I'm never listening to this That again. was this just is like crap. Yeah. Okay, so I noticed on this beer, and this is what I was wondering, because it said cherry, it's got a little red flavor to it. I mean, a little red bit. color to it. There. A little bit. It's got some red. In it. Now I poured, I I tilted and I poured like you're supposed but to. But you poured way too fast. Well, it said vigor. I was trying to vigor. It didn't say shake the shit while I you did pour it. it. I was doing it vigorously. Okay, so should we go ahead and have? Let's have a let's have a taste. You can't for like an hour until that head sits down. You can bite this head right here. Just bite it. Bite that head right there. Right there. Go, do it. Do it. Do it. Sorry. That's creepy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's really creepy. No. Go ahead and try your beer. All right, here we go. I'm going to smell it first. Okay, smell it. It's very kind of sweet smelling, you know? Okay. It smells It smells very yeah, kind of got some, little some sweet. bit of fruity, sweety kind of taste. I, I mean, don't it think it's a... going to taste like what you think it's going to taste like. Really? Yeah. Um, I would be disappointed if it's, if it's bitter because it doesn't smell bitter. Well, it is a quadruple, so it's going to have some hop at the back. Really? Yeah. Okay. Should I go for it? Go for it. Here I go. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. It doesn't taste like you thought it was going to taste, does it? Um. It doesn't taste like what I was afraid it was going to taste like. Okay. Let's say that. Okay. Uh, it's kind of, it's got a little caramelly taste to it. Indeed. Doesn't it? Indeed. It's not got a, It's not got the kick that I thought it might have, which, and I'm saying that in a good way. It does have flavor, mm -hmm. but I was kind of afraid I would kind of, you know, sometimes you have that and you're like, after you're done. <laughs> what, do that again? Uh, you can't see it on the, pot, on the, actually on the podcast, but it's more like, that was cute. Okay. It's like makes you like shiver it. a little bit sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. this doesn't have that, so no. I like that. Okay. Is there a name for that shiver, do you think? The beer shiver? The beer shiver? I, we can make the beer shiver. Matter of fact, we should make the beer shuffle. We should we should make a dance. Okay, so now that I'm having it, yeah, got past the head. I'm drinking. It it does have little <laughs> bits of. Sorry. It has little bits of the flavor that I like in the beer barrel uh, ales that we have, or uh, whiskey barrel yes, ales yes. that we have. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't think that's what it doesn't have that. I mean, it's mm -mm. not, but it still has that feeling kind of. I like it. I shouldn't say that because I'm not supposed to. You're not Telegraph reviewing my it yet. Review. I tell you what, I got some stories for you. Stories. Yeah. What? Uh, we got some things to talk about, but before we do, we're praying. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do Zabmondo. That's our let's, prayer. Let's pray. Let's open with some Zabmondo prayer. Okay. So Zabmondo, if if you're if son you, of a bitch, that which, hurt. I told you you're gonna. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> never put you around anything that's burning. It, I will hurt it's myself. Burn yourself. <laughs> It's like, you know, you're going to have a scar there for the rest of your life. You'll be like, well, that time I was doing the podcast and I burned myself on incense. Sorry about the profanity. It's just that when I'm physically hurt, uh, profanity just spews it from totally my mouth. It totally ruined your tattoo now. I, I can't. I can't help it. You know what would be cool? What? To have a tattoo that's like made with like flammable ink. And then every once in a while no. you can like light it. No, that wouldn't like, be cool like at all. On, like on 4th of July and it will like sparkle. That'd be awesome. That's how, that's how spontaneous <laughs> combustion happens, people. Zabmondo, if you haven't been listening to the show for a little while, we've started opening with Zabmondo. Now, Zabmondo is a game. I found this at uh, Goodwill. We don't play the whole game. We don't play the game at all. Nope. We just ask the questions. It's kind of like Trivial Pursuit. Uh, Not really. It's, it's more like of a Trivial would you Pursuit rather. does Jeopardy. 
It's like you. No, it's not at all like that. It it's is. A would I you get rather. to ask you a question, and then you. But, choose. but you get to pick what color. But there's no real answer. Just go with it. Jesus. <laughs> all right. All right. So. Uh oh. Oh, you get two questions. No. 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 Try it again. We're only going to do one. So now, what happens is we have several color stones. You drop one, and whatever drop, whatever stone you drop is what the I. The color question we're going to ask. And I read it. So. So I did purple. This is the one we don't understand because the question box looks like it's brown, but that's purple. So this is food ingestion. Things you put into your body like beer, which I'm going to have another sip of. Which I just did have another sip of because I'm allowing myself um, two fingers of beer today rather than one. Which finger? <laughs> Do I sound sexy? No. I think I sound sexier whenever I get sick. Not right now. Which is don't. weird because no one thinks anyone sick is sexy. I don't think. Maybe there's some. Do you think there's a fetish of people who uh, get turned on by people who are sick? And I wonder of if there's Of course there is. You think there's a name for it? I could probably look it up. Okay. I don't know that you want to. All right. So here we go. Food ingestion. For the next week, would you rather... I always forget to start yep. off. Would with you the rather? Word. It's like the Jeopardy thing. All right. Would you rather for the next week eat fish and chicken with the head still attached or <laughs> fish and chicken with the feathers and scales but no heads? That might be the stupidest question we've had so far. That's just ridiculous. I want another question. Well, you got to roll in a different color. What was the first one you did? You actually did two colors that came out. The, the other one that fell out was blue. Blue. We'll do a blue one. All right. Uh, appearance embarrassment. Would you rather have feathers and scales? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, would, would you rather have a wardrobe of only spandex and vinyl? Oh, dear. <laughs> or... Be required to wear an orthopedic corrective shoes for all your adult life. Ooh, the shoes. <laughs> I had to wear them when I was a child, when I was an infant. Well, here's okay, here's the thing. Corrective shoes. 20 years ago, I'd have been all about the spandex and the vinyl. Yeah. Today, I'm all about the comfy shoes. I don't know. I, I think I'll go with the spandex. No, don't. Yeah, I, I, no, don't. I think it would make uh -uh. so many people uncomfortable. It would make me uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, for me to be wearing the spandex. Put that away. If I was a larger man, I would wear uh, I would wear the spandex all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so glad you're on a date. Put that card. Or not on a date. On a no, diet. Put the card away. I'm just saying. If I was, if I was, extremely blessed as a male person oh well endowed extremely well endowed i would i would just i would be obnoxious i would i would be one of those guys that wore tight jeans like dong schlong silver i whatever. would do porn i i don't know that i would do porn but i would i would do you would masturbate on film no i yes, do that you now would. oh anyway um <laughs> put that back put it back i don't want to No, touch i'm it. just saying i'm just saying you know i think if i would show off more of my body if like you had if a I, big dick not just that, but I mean, like if I was built, if I was one of the, if I was a weightlifter dude, if I had like big guns and uh -huh. big abs and stuff, which I've never had the abs. I do have a big ab, but. <laughs> one big ab. One right big in the ab. Um, I think I would go, I would, I would walk around with no shirt or like a Ooh. tank top mm. type of shirt a lot more. Don't. I would show it off. Don't do that. I would. Put it, put that away and pick a color. Okay. Time Come on, pick a color. this is getting boring for people. Did I can't you believe answer? we don't did have. Did you even answer? I, I did. Don't remember what you said? The shoes. Oh yeah, you want the shoes? We don't even have. A Why would you need corrective shoes? Can if I you... speak? No. Why would you need corrective shoes if you're not if you don't have the corrective problem? Why would you just want to wear the shoes? Because they're comfy. Really? Yeah. Is that the thing? Orthopedic shoes. How do they correct? What do you think nurses wear all day? Okay. Well, that's not corrective. That's just comfy shoes. All right, here we go. Go. I'm predicting I'm going to drop red. Oh. It's purple. It's purple. Well, red's in purple. Okay, once again, <laughs> yes, it is, actually, because purple is a non-natural color. Um, okay, so uh, purple, <clears throat> Yes. also known as brown on the cards, right. is food ingestion. Okay. I hope this doesn't have I'm anything to do with fish it. or chicken. I'm not afraid of that question. Ew. Go ahead. Ew. Okay, would you rather... Would I rather... Eat 10 tubes of lipstick, not including the container. Okay. So just the lipstick. Yes. Or yes. the contents of a can of shaving cream. Oh. I would go with the lipstick. Would you really? Yeah. Um, 
I would prefer if it's flavored, you know, like lip gloss type of stuff. Right. Right. But again, that's kind of a dumb question. Do you know what? It's an extremely dumb question. No. But do you know what? If if you um, if you ate ten tubes of lipstick mm-hmm. when you went potty, your your poop would be all different colors. Lipstick? Yeah. Um, I think that would be funny. Having different color poop. Well, I mean, like weird colors. But now that you're saying that, you're going to try I, it. No. Oh. I just feel like now that should be a thing. You should be able to buy pills to change the color of your poop so you can make it whatever color to celebrate. It's like today, I would like red poop. Now, I know you can eat food coloring, but yeah. I'm just saying, you just it, it'd be easier just to have a pill so that it would, it's kind of like a rainbow. You could have like a rainbow. If you eat nothing but beets, yeah. that'll do it. Um, should I go into, should we really, <laughs> should we go down this? Because I was, I had a, I had an anecdote I was going to go into. Um, no, no anecdotes, It's kind please. of the time. And I, I won't go into a lot of detail, but oh God, there was a time. Go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. There was a, this thing happened is several years ago. Uh, it was around 4th of July. And I, at, I believe it was Walmart. I bought a bag of red, white, and blue uh, tortilla chips. Okay, yeah. To celebrate 4th of July. Sure. I and mean, I didn't think anything about it. Just no. poured them in a bowl and just ate them up. Sure. That was wonderful. With some queso. And then kind of forgot about it. Uh-huh. And then several hours later, I was like, what the heck? I, oh, I'm my dying. God, I've got cancer. <laughs> it took me a long time before I realized, no, no. No, That no. was the tortilla chips. Yes. Playing around. That happened to me the first time Oops. I ever made a smoothie with, like, mostly beets. Yeah. <laughs> Beets um, it was it was mostly beets with some berries as well. So uh-huh. berries and beets in my smoothie. It'll it'll celebrate for you, won't it? It it was interesting. Mm-hmm. It was an interesting event. Yeah. Well, um, so but I just feel like you know it, wouldn't that, that would be kind of a cool thing to be able to choose your favorite color. There is the a medication that I used to take that would turn my urine blue. That would be fun. It is like fun. Smurf potty. Yes. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> Can we stop? <laughs> yeah. People are like, are they 12? <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. We are 12. Uh, we are definitely one of the people, um, two of the people so that guess, should not talk about certain things. Guess what happened this week? Um, you got Smurf Body? No. I don't know. I have got to tell you this story because I haven't actually told you yet. Oh. Okay. okay. So there is this little dive bar over by where I work. Okay. That I go to. Dive bar? It's like a little dive bar and like- grill. After work kind or like of, for lunch? Like for lunch, yeah. They do lunch specials. Have and stuff. lunch at a dive bar? Well, yeah, because then I can have a drink. With okay. Tea. So um, there's this little bar over there, and I'm not going to tell you the name of it. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Um, but I go in there probably on average once a week, sometimes mm-hmm. twice, sometimes not at all. Yeah. Uh, that's what average means, Sherry. Yes. Um, so I was in there one day, and then the following day. I saw a news article. Mm-hmm. The woman mm-hmm. who had served me, uh-huh. the bartender slash server, yes. during the day. She slashed a server? No. Oh. She was murdered. Oh, my gosh. And burnt. No. Yes. Her boyfriend murdered her in her home and then set her on fire and set the whole house on fire. And she is dead. That would freak me the freak out. Yeah. But I mean, that's making it all about me. But still, just just knowing that. Yeah, she served me lunch one just day. Just you telling me that, I kind of freaked out. Yeah, and then the next, and that night, she was murdered by her boyfriend, and she was a very sweet woman. And she couldn't have she couldn't have been more than thirty six. I mean, I'm sure the news articles say how old she was, but she couldn't have been more than thirty six years old. How do you most. know it was her? Because uh, her picture's all over the news, and well, I wouldn't because the who marquee, served me. the marquee. How would you not? It's one person. At I'm the just bar. saying, if I go to a restaurant, I I don't remember who serves me. I don't, I would never know that. But I see her. It's only there's only ever one or the other. Oh, so you know her. There. You've seen her several times. I know her personally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And she's gone now. That's creepy. That's like the fourth person you've mentioned on the show who's died. Try second, but yes. <clears throat> no, I think fourth. Second. And I'm I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> I've known you a lot longer record than I knew either of them. That's just too freaking creepy. Yeah. So um, it is really creepy and very sad. She's she was a very nice nice person and yeah. and I mean I never I didn't have anything bad to say about her. But now she's gone and Ooh. they they still can't find the guy. Ooh. They know it was him, but they can't find him. So it's all over the news. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. That's not good at all. No. Well, we should just say that that's. You know, Atlanta's not that. 
I mean, I've been here for a long time. I don't know anybody who's been murdered. Well, she she didn't live in Atlanta. Anyway. I mean, there's some sections of Atlanta that's just like any big city that's sure. dangerous. Sure. But but yeah, I mean, you know, who you hang out with and who has problems is going to determine whether you're murdered or so not. So my neighbor uh-huh. was, in my opinion, murdered by... Well, you can't say that. Allegedly murdered by... I don't think you could say that. I think I'm not he sure was murdered should. by... It's my <laughs> opinion that he was murdered by... Matter. We could get a libel or a slander lawsuit from that. She doesn't listen to the show. We'll bleep it out. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. It was. Mur- it's it's an opinion. We think he was murdered by his beep friend. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, so then, then this woman, we know. Well, it's alleged. Well, it's if she did it though, and then they hear it, they'll come and hunt you down. Ain't nobody hunting my ass. That down. should be a lifetime movie, like the podcaster who accidentally said something to the people. Hunted them down. Yeah. We don't have enough listeners for that. I actually posted this, and I'm not trying to steal your spotlight. You totally just did. But I, You always do. But I posted something on Facebook the other day is, uh, that I had a great idea for um, a show on the ID channel. Okay. And what it is, is somebody goes, they're doing a story about a famous murder, and an actor goes in, and he's going to play the murderer. And he goes in yeah. and auditions for it. Yeah. And he doesn't get the part. Right. And it makes him so mad that he goes out and kills the family, uh, the real family of the people. That's awesome. That's a great story. Somebody needs to write that yeah, and that make it happen. a movie. And I mean, I, I, I think what we just talking about could happen too. Somebody's listening to it and then they're like, she thinks I did it. And what if they know and they're feeling guilty? They're like, she knows I got to kill her now. Nah. So now. And they know where you live because you just said where you live next door. So they're just like, they know. And now you got to watch out now where you when you go home. Yeah, I do. Because especially, I mean, because they know you know now. They know I know they know. So, I mean, oh, and another a solo thing. Podcast this thing. week has just been out out. I almost said out sane. What does that even mean? I, don't I, know. I meant outstandingly insane. Oh. So, a friend from work. Yes. Was murdered. No. Oh. Was held hostage. Oh, what? Um, when he was much younger. And a producer from a local television show Uh called him and wants to do an episode of a Um, show that we watch about his story. Man, I would would do that. I've not had anything. I, I think... If you knew you could get a thing like that happen to you, like a like a, a show or right. an episode, right. would you go through crap? I mean, you've been through some crap, but I mean, would you go through another big crap thing? Like, give me, would you be willing to be kidnapped? No. In order to get, no. I mean, you would die, but you would have a lot of, you know, bad things and scary things happen. I thought, and then no. you come off and you could do a show. I've had enough bad scary things happen to me. So I'm you good. wouldn't do it I'm for done. a show. Nah. But you might get one now that you've done this. I mean, you said all this stuff. It might still turn into a show. It could. Yeah. I doubt it, but it could. I don't know anything about this. So if they're going to kill someone, please don't kill me. Because <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I don't. This is totally. I've never seen the person. I don't know anything. So about so he's basically telling me, hey, I might get a personal phone call in the middle of the day and I might have to take it. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, people have life. Um, and he's like, yeah. So it's this producer from the show. And I'm like. Why? What's going on? And he goes into this whole story, and I'm just sitting there, just agape, just listening yeah. to him going, the fuck? You know? And and I I mean, I still haven't really absorbed it. And then to run into him again today, I'm just like, hey. I've Weird. never had anything uh, cool like that happen. No, that's not cool. That's but not I mean, cool I've never at had all. Any, I've never had anything happen to me that would be an interesting TV show in any way. He was, he was held hostage for ransom. That's crazy. Yep. I mean, yep. does his family have money? Uh, they appeared to. So, like years ago, I was when I was living in Chattanooga. I was in a parking lot, um, and I was with my ex, mm-hmm. and so we were in the parking lot, and we see this guy in a truck. He backs up really far, and just smashes into a car. Oh my gosh! And then just takes off. And so the person who, whose car he smashed, I think she was in the car. Oh, so he was trying to hurt her. No, I think he just wasn't paying attention. She just happened to be in the car. Oh, okay. So she takes off after him. We saw it happen, so we take off after him. Yeah. So the three of us are driving down the street, and he's going top speed, 
fast as he could be. He's trying to escape. Sure. And he knows we're following. Sure. So we go up and we get on the, uh, we take an exit and we're just driving fast. So he drives. I don't know if you were, no, you don't remember this. So anyway, there's a place um, up in Chattanooga. He like pulls over and he parks his truck and he jumps out of the truck and he just runs into this big overgrown area. Okay. We don't see him again. Okay. He's gone. So we call the cops. The cops show up, and then they bring dogs. Uh-huh. So they anyway they do some they trace his truck or whatever. Anyway, he just got out of jail. Of course, <laughs> of course he did. And Which is why he ran based on just an accident. He hit the car apparently by accident. I don't understand. I mean, I know if you're on probation, you're not allowed to break the law, but you that. But accidents happen. But he might have not had car insurance, or he that might have had out. drugs on him. That's true too. They did search the car, but I don't. I think they ended up finding the guy. Uh-huh. I can't remember, but I mean, they had to do a big search for him. Interesting. <laughs> he just took off running. That's the that's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you. No, it's not the weirdest, but I mean, like a criminal kind of thing that might be. I mean, I've had like people broken into my house before. Right. So, like um, when I was living uh, in Knoxville, which is where I'm from, uh-huh. I was living in a um, 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 little. It was a duplex. Okay. And I hadn't been in there that long. It was a cool little place. And somebody broke... I came home and somebody had broken into my house, went oh through goodness. everything. Now I don't have anything worth right. anything. Right. I did have a video camera. Mm-hmm. Now you could video anything off of a phone. Video sure. cameras just aren't really but worth But they used much. to be expensive. They used to be really expensive. And I had a video camera and <clears throat> somebody took it. Bastards. That was like the only thing they took. But they threw shit everywhere in my house. So they, they ransacked and they made a mess. Yeah. And they probably broke some things. And the weird thing is about the video camera is I just bought it and I didn't have... A, they, the tape was still in there. Now, I was dating someone at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> and Were you sneaking a video of the bound chicken bow wow? I remember one time I aimed the camera at her and I said, smile... And she opened up her shirt and showed her boobs, but they were in a bra. They, you couldn't see anything. So you just saw her with a bra. You saw her in a bra. Uh-huh. And that was on the video camera. <laughs> there was no porn, nothing like that. But that was on the camera. And so they took it. That means they saw your girlfriend's boobs. They saw the boobs. And they could have posted. But they, I mean, you really. I mean. You didn't really post things back they then. They were great boobs. Yeah. But I'm just saying it wouldn't. Nobody would care to see it on the internet. Right. And so I don't know how they would. You know, I, I it just it's just one of those things. It's like, oh, some some criminal saw my boobs. Really? Ooh. Really? And you feel kind of creepy. And just that they were in the house and everything. And then she probably got mad at you. No. Even though she's the one that showed her boobs. She didn't get mad at me. I mean, oh, okay. She, she knew. Okay. But anyway, so that was weird. Interesting. So I've definitely had had more run-ins with the law and criminal activity than you have. That's clear. Oh, I'm sh- I have no doubt that that's true. <laughs> and not only that, but you come from Alaska, which is kind of I don't come from Alaska. I well, come from California. I don't you lived lo- in Alaska longer than you lived in California. Absolutely, but I had more of my criminal run-ins in California okay. prior to moving to Alaska. Well, California and then Alaska. I mean, those that's kind of Alaska sort of an outlaw state. I mean, there's oh, yeah. some weird wild yeah, yeah. stuff out oh, there yeah. in Alaska. Mm-hmm. But also California maybe too. And I mean, I grew up in Tennessee, East Tennessee, there's some weird stuff. Most of my stuff in California was involving drugs. <laughs> well, I don't mean, do drugs, kids. Right. I don't cuz you'll end up like me and that's just wrong. Yeah, you don't want to end up like her. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. Doing a podcast and stuff with purple hair. With me. With some old guy. <laughs> Okay, so I have a question. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, and we what haven't a, been in a situation where we could talk about it. We but are I, now. There's two things I want to talk about. Okay. Okay, so I just saw this thing yesterday. What is I didn't it? even know this existed. Okay. It's a drone. It's a drone. I a love camera, drones. It's a camera drone that is, what is that, four inches? That looks more like three or two and three a half. Three inches, and you you unfold it. And it flies. You right. fly it with That's a little. That's what a drone does. You fly it with a. It looks like a little uh, remote control from a, a video game That's thing. That's exactly what it is. How do you fly a three-inch drone? I don't know. But anyway, so we have them at work. <laughs> the three-inch drones. Yeah. Um, and I just I don't know. I don't understand that. It's just like it's kind of creepy because it can follow you anywhere. And video you from way above where you wouldn't even hear it or I see know. it or anything. I know it's like a little hummingbird, an yeah. evil hummingbird. It's frightening. 
That's crazy. People can fly a drone up to your window. You think you're on the second floor, so you leave your windows open, mm-hmm. right? Because why not? Nobody can see you up there. Ooh, I should tell you. No. Hey. I've got a story, but I'm not going to okay. tell it. So people can fly drones up into windows and look through your windows with uh-huh. their cameras and see what you're doing in there. So okay. keep that in mind. I, I, uh, we're going to revisit that just a minute. But All I right. just, this little, because drones, uh, the drones that I've seen have always been like 10, 12 inches, whatever, just kind of larger mm-hmm. drones. This is, you could put it in your shirt pocket. Easy. And just like send it up. Yep. That's kind of scary. You can also fly them close to the ground and get some g- nice upskirts. Oh. Which is really not cool to do. People don't do it. Uh, can you, can they film spandex? <laughs> 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 that's up spandex. Um, yeah, that's, that's just weird. Yeah. That's very strange. I just, I, I mean, I was watching it and I was like, Something that small, you can't have much control over. It just seems like it would just go really crazy. But they were, it was, they had control. It looked. You control it just like any other device that you can control with a with a remote control. But you just walking down the street, and then on you just look up, and there's this little mm-hmm. flying in front of your face, and you're like, mm-hmm. get, get away. You That's know? when you smack it and stomp on it. Yeah, and yep. is that illegal? I don't uh, think well, it is. Well, it's it's destruction of personal property. If they're in your face, exactly. I don't know about that. I mean, slam it really hard. I don't. I don't know that there's any legal precedent at this point. But if somebody is invading your space yeah. with a recording device, you uh-huh. can, in my opinion, you can absolutely crush it. All right. So I got two things to talk about here. All right. Following up on this, okay. one of them that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I read a story. They have this drone technology, where it can see through your wall. Yeah. Drone can now see through your wall. There's nothing you can do in your house, it's your X-ray apartment. Vision. It's x-ray vision. They're looking, they're watching at you. Does that creep you out? Nah. Would it change the way you live your life? Not at if all. If someone is watching what you're doing in your house? If you're that interested in what I'm doing in my house, then you got problems. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing I do. I'm trying to think if there's anything... Uh, I don't spend a lot of time... Um, <laughs> just say it. Just say it. <laughs> I don't. I'm an older guy now. I right. don't spend a lot of time uh, spanking the monkey. Got gotcha. you. That would might be the only thing I wouldn't want anybody to see. Because like making love, you know, with your partner. Yeah, that's you, one thing. I would smile and wave at that one. Right. I mean, that's like, hey, look at what I got. Look right at this here. right here. Look that's what I'm doing. Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You're on your computer. This is what I'm doing. And I'm getting some. Yeah, but if you're if you're spanking by yourself, that's just sad. I mean, I'm not saying this the the action itself is okay. Go sure. for it. I'm just saying you don't want anybody else knowing that. It's just like really, you, that's all you got to do tonight. Because even if you are masturbating for someone else's pleasure, you you do things differently mm-hmm. than you do if you do it for just yourself. Yeah, and then, and and two, you kind of. I don't know. You want approval on who gets to see that. Yeah. I mean, no. Um, and here's the thing. I don't want anybody watching this. <laughs> I'm, but I'm saying if it happens, I would be more okay with that than some other things. And so, like, other than that, what else is there? I don't do anything else. I mean, there's no, there's nothing no one would want to watch. <laughs> There's nothing life. anybody would want to watch me do either, but that's not what these things are created for. It's like, oh, he's eating peanut butter again. There he goes. Uh, oh, look, he's sitting. sharing with the dog. Yeah, he's on his computer. Yeah, yeah. Let's go somewhere else. Right. I mean, I don't have anything else to show. Nope. Um, but pe- some people do. Some people have, uh, like, terrorist activity. Some people have um, secret documents. Some people are doing bad things, like, to children. And you got to be able to see these things. Now, should people I be don't... Lo- Hold on. You got to be able to see these? What does that mean? I don't agree. Well, I just got, I was just about to say, I don't agree with anybody illegally looking through your walls at you. Right. But if you suspect somebody of something, they have for years and years and years had poll cameras. Well, they just did this. Um, I think it, the they just had this case this past week. Uh, maybe you read about it. Apparently, like the cops had suspected somebody had a motorcycle and they were doing some criminal activity. You know, they, they believed that the motorcycle had been stolen or something and they couldn't prove it. And so anyway, the, the cops showed up at the person's house yeah. and the person was at home uh-huh. and they lifted up the tarp and they saw the motorcycle and then they, I don't know, filmed it or whatever. But anyway, it was just this week it was 
ruled by the court that that's illegal. That's well, it's an illegal, illegal search. search. But yeah. it, but before it wasn't because, or it was like at least gray inside the house, but outside the house, it wasn't necessarily illegal. So they just ruled that it was. So I, I agree with that. I, I do. Kind of do. I do. But but if I'm, it's a drone, here's what I'm saying. What, though. How where's how is it illegal? If you think that someone has got a kidnapped kid in their house, mm-hmm. uh huh. And you think that if you go knocking on the door, they're just going to slit that kid's throat and Uh then kill themselves? I agree. Wouldn't you rather make sure that they had that kid in there before you tried to do anything? Um, What exactly is the alcohol content of this? You don't remember me saying? You never listen to me anymore. Is 9.7? You never, ever listen to me. I never heard that part. I said Almost 10%. Yeah. It's a little buzzy. I haven't had a lot to eat today. I can tell you're getting a little buzzy. Kind of feeling it. Um, Ruth Buzzy. Ruth Buzzy. That's the second time I've heard Ruth Buzzy today. I hear her a lot. Really? She's the voice in my head. No, I'm just saying the <laughs> name. That's weird. Um, okay. So I don't know how I feel about this. I'm, I, I'm more concerned about people who are going to be raised in this environment. If this, if the, it's going to be a norm for them. If you're concerned about privacy in this day and age, you need to move to the middle of BFE. I don't I don't know that I can agree with that. I mean, I know I understand maybe that's the attitude that people are going to have to adopt, but it's also just like, well, why can't we say no? You can say no. Get rid of all of your electronics. Line your walls with tinfoil. No, let's just say companies can't do it. I mean, I think what's happening is a lot of the laws are being taken away where they're allowed you know your tv can watch you now and it can record you i mean if you're watching porn Mm -hmm. and you're you are dealing with the monkey they can (laughs) see that dealing with the monkey i'm not going to go into detail but i'm saying they could watch that (laughs) and even film it yeah that's what i said maybe that's part of what the research they're like how much time does he spend spanking that thing and they can (laughs) send it out I know. Without I you ever even knowing it existed. But I just don't. What if you're, what if you are, uh, what if you're calling sick? You're not feeling, you know, you're, you know, you're fine. You're fine. You're just like, you know what? I need, I need a help. mental I, health day. So I'm going to call in sick today. And you call right. in sick and your boss goes, well, I'm sending the drone out to look through the walls to see if she's really sick. And sends it out. And you're there just, you're having a party. You're having fun. Or playing with the monkey. Playing with the monkey. You might be walking. You might be. Dancing, maybe you got some music on. You dance. You don't seem sick at all. We're cleaning house, whatever. and they fire you. Yeah. Can you do that? that no. The why they will be able to. Buddha. It's oh. scary. What? We have our dog up here. Is he ripping? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he does that. That's his favorite thing. And, you know, it's been it's been raining and thundering and like, and he can't be by himself. He freaks out. So yeah, he's he's it's in the here with the first time we've actually broadcast. The the uh, podcast while he's laying on the floor. He's, he's out. dreaming too. He's yeah. out completely out. He's dreaming, farting that he's, and dreaming. He's dreaming that he's farting. Yep, <laughs> it's coming true. Yes, that's what he does. Okay, so here's my other thing what? I want to talk about. Uh, well, for, I don't feel like we've talked enough about that, but I I'll kind of let it go. I just I I don't I'm not comfortable with that. Well, nobody's comfortable with it. Well, I know, but I mean, I see I, you. What you said, I hear a lot of people saying, just okay, that's the way it is today. I don't. I don't know if I can accept that. I can don't you want not to say, accept it. Well, I just feel like maybe we should say no. Okay, no. We should make it not happen. I say no. No, but I mean, what you say doesn't count. It's what the leaders and that's the people exactly who pass. That's exactly what I. But just that's am what I'm saying. Say. We, if we say to the leaders to stop making this legal, they would have to outlaw it. Mm. What'll happen is. One of these drones will catch a senator doing something illegal, and then they will make it illegal. Oh, yeah. That's when it will happen. Or the well, not president. Not anymore. All they want to do now is find people in government doing bad things. That's yeah. all anybody's looking for anymore. That's crazy. That's it. It's crazy. All right. So the other thing, we had this conversation, too, I think, last week about AI. Yeah. yeah artificial yeah. intelligence. So it suddenly occurred to me today, and maybe I read something that made me think about it, but I was just like, I was, because... There. Oh, I know what it made me think of. I read a story where a bunch of Google employees are wanting to strike. They're wanting to go on strike because Google apparently is helping the military with some secret thing involving artificial intelligence that a lot of their employees don't agree with. 
Now, I don't know the details, so I can't go into the details, and I don't know, but I just, my mind started going crazy, and I started uh -huh. thinking, because they were saying it involved artificial intelligence and drones. Okay. So I started thinking about that combination, and I started thinking, wow, when you think about, let's just say the enemy, mm -hmm. and it could be any enemy, mm -hmm. but let's just say an enemy Not an that enemy. has suicide bombers. Right. Even though there doesn't seem hardly to be a shortage of that, if you, if the drones or the the implement of destruction can be piloted by artificial intelligence, it would never stop. You don't need a suicide bomber ever again. Mm -mm. The artificial intelligence now can kill you with the drone. Yeah. That's their job. Yeah. And then as soon as that one's done, next one goes on. Yep. It doesn't ever stop. Nope. How... Would a president of the United States ever go anywhere without a three-inch drone being piloted by artificial intelligence trying to kill him? H how would that? How would that ever happen? I have no idea. Are we all going to have to wear like bubble outfits that are bulletproof and stab-proof and bomb-proof? <laughs> stab-proof. Oh, I mean, it's crazy that what's happening where yeah. we're going to be going. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, insane. I'm with you. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So where we're hearing now about suicide bombers blowing things up, right. we're, we're not even going to, no longer, no one's going to have to die except the people who are victims. There's no suicide bombers anymore. It's just drones. And then, and I'm sorry I have to say this, but it's a matter of time before drones have nuclear bombs on them. And people... They already do. And it's going to... They already do. They're just going to move it to one of the big cities here. Military fly drones from the comfort of wherever over places they want to bomb and drop bombs. They don't even have to get in a plane. They don't even have to go anywhere. That's been a thing for a while now. Military drones with, with bombs. I, I, I mean, we should be cheering people up. <laughs> Instead of talking about this. <laughs> Should we go back to poop? I think drones should bring donuts to people. Yes. Why yes. isn't that happening? <gasps> Food uh, delivery by drone. But I mean, what if you know you the, the drone is driving down? They're coming. They're bringing it, and then some somebody standing on the street just spits on your food. Well, you can't control everything. I know. Then you, now we you have delivery know. drivers who could spit in your food, There's and you would pee in know. the air, and they're peeing as you pass. You know, that's that's their job. They're sitting up waiting for the drone to pass, and they pee on your food. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that either. Of course, I guess the delivery driver could do it. That's what I'm saying. I don't we know. have people. I prefer now. to go pick up my food. Because the to... person cooking it couldn't have done that? Well, they're not supposed to. <laughs> no one's supposed to. I just I like to cook my own food. Okay. That's what I and do. And you are not gonna pee on it? I never pee on my food. What are you talking about? All right. It's insane. That is gross too. All right. Well, let's get off the drone stuff. Let's stop droning on that. <laughs> All right. Actually, before we do, I just want to see if it's a thing in my little book here. What drones? Yeah. If there's a drone fact. Yeah. I think that might be written before there was drones. You're right, because yeah. it's not here. There's no drones. There's something about drugs. Oh, let's talk. What about drugs? It's short. Okay. So here's a little tidbit about drugs. Tidbits. Useless information about drugs. <laughs> useless. Yes. You we will have need, no use for this. We all need useless ever. information about drugs because we got a lot of use. Useful information about drugs. We need some use less. So, in 2001, uh -huh. Jose Antonio Campos Clout. I knew him. Was he your buddy? He was. He's nice. a good friend of mine. Oh, I'm sorry, because this mm -hmm. is bad. He oh. was arrested at Melbourne Airport after a momentary lapse in concentration. I remember that. As he was filling out the customs form, he absentmindedly ticked the yes box to a question asking whether he was carrying illicit substances. I mean, that's just a dumbass. The I'm sorry. Sub <laughs> the subsequent search revealed that he was a cocaine smuggler. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And you accidentally said yes. That, what? That's like... Okay, so so he's waiting in line, he goes through customs, uh -huh. and he's up there, and the customs go, oh, that's great, you have a good time, yeah. Uh, he's gotten all the way to Melbourne. Did you go to the beach? Yeah, I did. Did you buy anything cool? Yeah. Are you a drug smuggler? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. I mean, no. I mean, no. I mean, no. Uh, what's going All right, come back to the back room. <laughs> that's like the worst drug smuggler in the world. Right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, you're smuggling drugs? Oh, 
Okay. You got me. Maybe. What do you got? Uh, cocaine. Oh, I mean, no. No, I meant I meant Benadryl. Minute. Benadryl. I have Benadryl. Yeah, that guy should be caught. That's, yeah. He's just bad at his job. He's <laughs> really bad. So bad. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I had something else I wanted to talk about. And you forgot. forgot. Yeah, I'm with no, you. No, no, I remembered. What? I just what? remembered. Oh All right, this God. is going to be a quick one. I just want your opinion because we talk, we talk a lot about um, politically incorrect things here. Often, yes. I started thinking about this because I've heard a couple examples of it. Okay. Just, um, all right, so you know what? You hear the word appropriation a lot. I do. Um, people talk about that. Especially Cultural appropriation. Liberals, like, that's one of their favorite things to talk about. Yeah. Okay, so it, I specifically, I have heard a specific, recently, a specific band do this and but I, but over time i've i've heard generally i've heard this happen do you remember the group the judds yes it's not a group it's like a mother and a daughter uh uh <laughs> the judds it was winona and and naomi naomi yes. yes so they were sort of accused of this although i don't know that that it applies to them but i hear it a lot so and this is like groups like, I heard a group, which I really like the group. Uh -huh. They're from California. Uh -huh. And so they're from Anaheim, which is close to L.A. And so they're doing kind of bluegrass music, maybe Americana music. Sure. So if you, t if you hear an interview with them, they sound like they're from California. Yeah. And then they start doing this music, and then they sing with, like, a twang like they just walked out of the mountains. In but didn't you and I just mention this last week in regards to the band that you saw that was singing an old... Um, uh, spiritual. Yes, an yeah. old spiritual. Yeah, a uh, Negro spiritual, right. they call it, I guess. I don't know what the proper word is. Now. And they that were, maybe but still that's is. the genre of music. It's the exact same thing. This is a racial thing, and then the other is a cultural thing. Uh -huh. So that's my question. Is it cultural appropriation... If a band from Portland sings a twangy country song or a hillbilly uh, bluegrass song, and yeah. they do it in the voice of the twangy bluegrass people, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. It, but why? But if okay, okay. But let's say that somebody decides to sing a Bollywood song, right? And they do it in the ac Indian accent. Uh -huh. Let's say somebody from Little Rock, Arkansas, is singing a Bollywood song, right? And they decide to do it in the accent. Is that cultural appropriation or even no, racial? It's not appropriation. appropriation at all. What it is is, um, uh, what's another word for parroting? Um, Parrot mocking, uh, not mocking, but um, imitation. Imitation, yeah. And sometimes people imitate to celebrate. Okay, so I'm not talking about reasonable explanations. I'm talking about uh, liberal <laughs> slants. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> because there is. Uh, oh, oh, first of all, and I and I I'll be transparent about this. I. I'm not a fan of the word appropriation. Yeah. Or cultural appropriation. Yeah. I feel like we're all in a we're all kind of in the same cultural melting pot and it's called earth. So I have seen and please people google. I mean go to YouTube and look <laughs> it up. Country bands from Japan. Yes. It's awesome. Yes. <laughs> to watch with the cowboy hats and the boots. And you can't really always understand what the lyrics of what they're saying, <laughs> but it's awesome. So, is that cultural appropriation? I mean, if yes. You, go ahead and say it. Based say on it. based on the uh, definition of cultural appropriation, yes. Yes, because if somebody from Atlanta was singing Chinese songs, and I know, I know China and Japan are not the same thing. <laughs> I just want to say that. I, I, but if they were the saying, if they were singing Chinese songs, yes, and they were doing it in a Chinese accent, uh -huh. if they were doing the Mikado, which is Japanese, I know, right, um, and doing it in the accent, which that that play at musical operetta, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. is always kind of targeted. But if they were doing it in an accent or in the costumes or whatever, it, they're going to get skewered for it. Yeah. So why can Japanese dudes and dudettes, I guess, sing? American country music in the outfits, in the costumes 
of country music and do it. Why can they do that? Why? How come we can't sing in kimonos? Why I don't know. Because I want to. I think you should. <laughs> I kind of want to do that. I think you should. No, but but so then let's bring it away from Asia and let's take it just to America. Okay. What if a band totally uh, from California, mm-hmm. born raised in California, mm-hmm. they decide they want to sing West Virginia hillbilly songs in, in the, the in the accent with the twang, and they're doing the they're doing, and I'm not going to do it right now, but they're doing the accent, right? And then when you talk to them and you do an interview, they they sound like news anchors. They've got the perfect voice. Is that cultural appropriation? Yeah. It is. Yeah. I agree. Based on the definition of I'm cultural not saying, appropriation. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying it's cultural appropriation. So here's something funny that I saw today <clears throat> that is in the same line of what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I saw a, a tweet. I can't remember who tweeted it. I'm sure I'll be told. Um, somebody says, I want to be in the room. I just want to be in the room when a bunch of... 30-something blonde women from California realized during their yoga class that that is cultural appropriation. <laughs> I tweeted that. That's my tweet. Oh, that was you? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I said they're appropriating Indian culture. Yes. Because they are. And my idea was, and again, like, I don't care. I think no. that's fine. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. But liberals do. I'm a liberal, so I can skewer my own people. Yeah, <laughs> do it. But I'm just saying... That line of thinking, a lot of the people who kind of have that line of thinking go to yoga class a lot. And I think at some point they're going to wake up and go, wait a minute, aren't we appropriating Indian, Indian culture? culture? Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to go into much deeper. I, I feel like that that becomes a beast that ends up eating itself. Yeah. If you can understand what that means, what I, I'm saying. I do. But it's I not think, a pleasant image. No, but, but yes. I think that that's what's going to happen in a lot of different things because I don't think you can... I don't think you can um, endorse or be against cultural appropriation without it eventually coming back and getting you. Okay, so because we're all mixed. So when mixed. political correctness came into uh, into fashion, if sort you will, of, yeah, mm-hmm. um, it 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 got and to this day mm-hmm. still sometimes gets a little just fucking annoying yeah okay definitely so so and i'm i'm all about not putting anybody down i'm not i don't want to be derogatory in any way shape or form i i always want to use the correct phrasing but it changes by the day yeah so i don't know what to always say right um but the same thing is going to happen with cultural appropriation so are you uh, uh appropriating scottish culture if you wear a kilt you are because you're american right Right. Um, Am I uh, doing the same thing if, you know, okay, British bands in the 60s and 70s always sang in an American accent. Mm -hmm. What's that about? I don't know. Well, let me ask you even more controversial. Let's say you're a black dude. Yeah. And sorry for using the word black. I don't know if you like it. I mean, maybe African American, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what you prefer, what term. I'm going to say black okay. because I don't mind people calling me a white guy. Yeah. And I'm not even white. But <laughs> right. let's say you're an American, well, African-American. You were born in 74. I was born in 74. But you're not a dude. No. And you're not black. Not today. Let's say you were. Uh-huh. Let's say you're wearing African dress. Okay. Are you appropriating Amer- uh, African culture? Well... Because you are, uh, yeah. like, I, my my background is Scottish. I can wear a kilt. Yeah. If I'm appropriating Scottish culture, wouldn't that person be appropriating African culture? So so let's let's see how far back in your family tree people actually lived in Scotland. Yeah. Like, like, how many generations would you guess? Uh, let's see. One, two, about four, maybe five. Okay. So let's say... Uh, that our friendly black guy that's sitting here with us that is wearing African uh, uh-huh. dress. Uh-huh. Um, his when's the last generation that his family lived? Oh, in I Africa? have no idea. I have no idea. Okay, I couldn't tell you. But Should we'll that matter? Say seven or eight. Should that matter? No, I don't think it matters at all. I think, uh, but because first of all, first I'm not a, I'm not against or for that. I don't care. No, I don't. I and don't. I honestly, I think if you're if you're a citizen of China. Uh huh. 
you probably don't care if an, if a, a white American wears a Chinese outfit. Probably not. You don't care. Uh-uh. Why would you care? Uh-uh. I couldn't care less. As someone raised in Tennessee, mm-hmm. I don't care if someone in Tokyo wears a country outfit. No. I don't care. Uh-uh. It's amusing to me, actually. <laughs> and in some ways, it's flattering. They, they love it so much that they're going to do that. Right. Oh, I don't care. Sure. I feel like that there's a small group of people in America, and and I will say it, a lot of times it's a liberal group of people mm-hmm. who somehow are just they they're obsessed with doing the right thing the political correctness they thing. want to do the right that their heart is in the right place mm-hmm. and they're standing up for these people who are oppressed because we're wearing their dress mm-hmm. <laughs> and i just feel like it's kind of misguided that's just my opinion i'm fine with saying that but but i don't mind if someone who has never been to africa before wants to wear the african um, um, outfit because it gets them closer to their roots. And sure. I don't care if people want to wear a kilt. I no. don't care. I don't care if a German dude wants to wear lederhosen. Mm-mm. I don't care. Or or a non-German dude. No, I don't care. Uh-uh. I don't care at all. It doesn't. It doesn't really affect me. Um, I think, and I know from my kilt days, I've had people who have contacted me from Romania and said, "Is it okay? I just want to wear a kilt." And I'm like, sure, do it. I, why would I care? Yeah. It's just fun. Why not? You're so, not making, if you're doing it, if you're making fun of the people. That's different. If you're wearing overalls because you're trying to make fun of southern or let's just say East Tennessee people. And I know more than that wear right. overalls. Right. But like the quote redneck culture and you've got the straw hat and mm-hmm. the overalls and the a, a piece of weed in your mouth, right? Or a corn cob pipe, and I'm sorry for spitting on you. Thank you. Um, that's, I mean, it happens. Yeah. You go to Pigeon Forge. Oh yeah, Tennessee. That's how they make their living there. Making fun of people they they probably are related. Just to. Just stereotyping yeah. that culture. Yeah, yeah. It's it's and that's embarrassing to me. Uh, but if you're doing it, if you want to wear it overalls because. You, it makes you feel closer to the, the people that you grew up with. Sure, do it. I don't care. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the conversation that you and I had with uh, my friend David Burke uh, for the other podcast. Yeah. In which he he grew up in I, uh, Ireland. Yeah. And he said that to people over there, it's odd mm-hmm. that Americans say, I'm Irish yes. or I'm Scottish mm-hmm. or, you know, I'm Finnish or whatever. Um, because... To him, he's like, no, you're American. <laughs> right. Because I, when I'm Irish, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So for him, I mean, and, and, and that's, he said that people in Ireland tend to look at it like, but you're, you're American. So, so where you're at and, and where you grew up and where you live and where you're born is what you are. Is, is, is nationalism cultural appropriation? Well, I mean, some people say yes. Right. But, but, if you take it to the extreme, if you if we start accepting that that's okay, which I accept it, I don't have a problem with it. Uh-huh. But then there starts becoming this weird thing where you have then you'll have like uh, time appropriation. So like people who are and I don't know how to um, explain this, but if there's a group of people. And I really like this. Okay. But there's a proof. And all I can think of to say is like um, rockabilly. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Swing dancing kind sure. of. Sure. Where they have the hairstyle yeah. and then the clothes the and stuff. The zoot suits. Exactly. Right. And even more. I mean, it, it's sort of, in, it, sometimes it's wrapped up in tattoo culture. Oh, uh, it can be. Like the uh, pinup girl. Pinup is exactly it. Right. But it's usually based around that 50s. Uh-huh. Sometimes maybe 60s look. Mm-hmm. And people do that. They wear those outfits, and it, I mean, a lot of that just look awesome. I don't so, care who they are. If people dress like that, I just immediately think they're cool. With the barrel rolls and the exactly, hair. yeah, yeah. Isn't whole... that appropriating a diff- a totally different culture? And then is that wrong? That is um, era appropriation. I'm getting. I might go ahead and get drunk. I don't. 
I mean, I your wife know. is out of town. No. But okay, so 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 that's not really cultural appropriation because it's the same culture that we live in now. It's, but it's just a, it's era appropriation. That's what I'm saying. It was time, but it's also kind of culture too because it's the the culture of that time, and two. It's a misrepresentation. It's a stereotype of that time because everybody didn't dress like that. Not That's everybody true. dressed like Brian Setzer back in that And they that didn't time. dress that outrageously, no. if you will. It's almost, I, I don't want to go this far, but some people do take it this far to almost a cartoon of that look. When you see the 80s, like kids today, right. kids today, um, <laughs> trying to emulate 80s stuff where we grew up in the 80s, but like they're a trying young to do the, Madonna, or they're trying something. to be, or the metal bands right. where they have like it, everything's exaggerated. The clothes they mm-hmm. got, they usually have like studded collars. Now I'm not saying no one ever wore that because they did. I did, but I'm just saying they put those together and they do their hair like really, really outrageous, and so it's it becomes more of a cartoon version. Exactly, exactly, and that's what happens with the so-called like. Uh, what do you call it? Pinup culture. Pinup culture. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or um, there, I'm sure there's another a better word for it. But I mean, I just I don't I just I'm one of those people that just feel like that you should be able to do what you want. I don't. I'm not against white guys wearing dreadlocks. I couldn't care less. Uh-uh. And in fact, the way I look at it is, if you're a white dude and you grew up in Jamaica, you can't help how where you grew up. Your parents are missionaries or just people who lived in Jamaica. They were white. But that is your culture. Yeah. You why can't you wear dreadlocks? Because everybody that you knew that you grew up with, you don't have another culture you could choose from. And then, you could choose from your grandparents' culture, but that's not yours. And then going back to what David was talking about, you're American, right? Because that's where you live, that's where you were born, that's where yeah. you grew up. So can that same white guy with dreadlocks who was raised in Jamaica, can he say he's Jamaican? He is Jamaican. See? And, I know. And, and are people going to be like, what? Well, I mean, I, you know, I went to a Christian college and I knew people who were American, had American face. Everything about them was American, but they spoke perfect Japanese. Mm-hmm. Their parents were Japanese missionaries. They were born in Japan. Right. But their parents were American and they looked American. But that was Japan. Japanese was their first language. I've known this. And this they si- probably lived in that culture during their formative years. It, it's who they are. Why is it that? Why why can't you say that their culture is Japanese? And then if they walk around the house in a kimono or like a whatever, that's not cultural appropriation. That is their culture. Yeah. That's what they grew up in. It is. That's what they know. I know people like that who are born in the Philippines who is the same situation. Yep. It just I feel like a lot of times liberals, of which I am one, um, are so reactionary and so they have such knee jerk judgments. Yes, trying to do what's right that they don't always think about what the whole story is. Exactly. And to me, cultural appropriation, as we become more of a global culture, is going to become more impossible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know, I know Chinese liberals who complain about white women wearing traditional Chinese outfits while they are wearing blue jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wait a minute, Chinese person. (laughs) I mean, okay, just trade the outfits and then we'll be okay. Sure. But no, if you're going to appropriate American culture, it's okay if we appropriate China. Nobody's going to say that. It. I mean, first of all, what's wrong with it? It's just like, that's ours. You can't have it. Uh, yeah, we can. We can. It's a free country. Yeah, but well, it's just, a free world, yeah. really. Not everywhere, but um, but if you have the opportunity to dress as you see fit, without some government telling you what you have to wear, and what yeah. you or or some religion for that matter telling you what you have to wear, um, then then by all means wear whatever the hell you want. Yeah, because it it will come down to if you if you let that happen, it will come down to you're not allowed to eat a taco. Right, you can't do it. Right, because I, I have no Hispanic. You're appropriating culture in me. Mexican culture. Yeah, but I grew up in California. Does that count? No, but you're not allowed to wear a cowboy hat or eat grits. Oh, because those aren't stereotypical Californian things? That is correct. Ah. You know there's lots of ranches in California where cowboys actually wear cowboy hats. And, and, um, and, and California's a big state. It's huge. It goes from like where we would say, what, like maybe Maryland? All the way down to at least South Carolina, maybe farther than that. Almost down to Florida. Yeah. So if you take <clears throat> the entire eastern seaboard and cut off about a third of it, 
The rest would be California. So, I mean, it's made up of multicultures, but I always think it's weird. Uh, I won't go into this too much, but it's just like um, one of the things we're going to talk about this, I think, next week about okay. movies yeah. and uh, movies. We, I think you had a concept of and this is something that other people maybe can send in some information. Yeah, absolutely. Chime opinion. in on this one. Uh, movies that you, whenever you watch it, you there are certain scenes that you have to rewind to watch over and like over. Like you just watch it and you're like, oh, pause it, pause it. And then you rewind to just watch that one scene again for multiple reasons. Maybe yeah. you didn't hear exactly what they said. Uh, maybe you're trying to figure out exactly what they said. So you but rewind not just, it. Separate, not just once, but, but I mean like right, over, over and over and over. And over. Yeah. I have things like that. And that's what brought this whole thing up. And we will talk about what those are next, next week. week yeah. But man, there are things where uh, something will just bring tears to my eyes and for whatever reason because I'm kind of uh, masochistic I will then go ahead and rewind it over right. and over and over again and watch it again now we can take that even to the extreme where I'll watch an amazing movie literally go back and start watching it again as soon as it's done Yeah, like the whole thing I don't know that I've done that maybe I have I don't know I did I, I've watched I mean my early days I've watched movies back to back Yeah, but I was thinking about the movie it was one of my favorite movies Ed Wood yeah which I love that movie, which obviously I do because I just said it was one of my favorite movies. Uh, but there's a scene in it where Ed Wood and his group of misfits are being baptized into the First Baptist Church of Beverly Hills, uh -huh. California. Mm -hmm. And the preacher, he talks like this. Right. When he's talk and I'm just like, that's so stereotypical Yep. because it's like it's religion, mm -hmm. So, but it's Beverly Hills religion. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, and, and in fact, if, if if the pastor of the First Baptist of Beverly Hills is actually listening to our podcast right now. I doubt now, it. I please seriously doubt send it. send us a video or an audio of the way you talk, because I'll guarantee you. He doesn't sound he like doesn't this. He doesn't sound like he came from Georgia. No, he does not. But everybody in Hollywood who is religious speaks with a crazy Southern accent because right. Right. Hollywood thinks all people who are religion are somehow crazy rednecks. That's right. Yeah. So, but that movie, which is a great movie, the pastor in that who baptizes it, that he talks with a Texas or Southern accent. Yeah. That's and, just crazy. But that's what you get. I mean, I'm not saying there's no accents similar to that in California because they are. Yeah. But I don't think they're in Beverly Hills. Well, <laughs> I mean, you don't know that. I'm. I'm just saying I know that there are some... Texas and Southern people who live in Beverly Hills, but I'd just be willing to bet the pastor of the First Baptist Church does in Beverly Hills like does that. not. And I'm not sure. Is there a First Baptist Church in Beverly Hills? Yeah. There's got to be. There's probably a first and second, a second third. and a third. Um, and another thing that you just brought to my attention mm -hmm. was that, yes, Baptists always have that Southern accent. They always do. But the one religion... Mm -hmm per se, uh -huh. over, like, all of things. Right. That has zero accent. Uh-huh. Mormons. Okay. No accent. But you don't see a lot of those. But Mormons portrayed in movies are usually, like, um, very Western kind of... Well, yeah, they're all in Utah. I almost became a Mormon at one point, and oh. I I did. And I went to the church, uh -huh. and I got to meet the people. They're just they normal. let you in? They're just like anybody in there. I have cousins. Oh, I know. I have friends who My are Mormons. My cousins, like, I have some cousins who I grew up with. They moved to Mormon country for a while, and then they married Mormon uh -huh. women, and they all became Mormons. They went on missionary missions, and, uh -huh. they're, and they're just, they're like everybody. They're just people. There's no strange, I mean, there are strange weird people anywhere nowadays if you oh man we this is a whole nother show <laughs> nowadays if you're a catholic priest uh, on a tv show or something, right. you're going you've you've abused a kid of course it's just it's the stereotype yep yep you're right but there's so much in and there's so much uh beyond that there's so many priests who have done wonderful things in the world. Yes. And they have, it's like the cops. One cop, or more than one cop, shoots an innocent person, and every cop is now um, subject to that karma. Correct. Every cop yep. is that bad person. Yeah. It's like that with religion and anything else. It, and I think that's, I don't know. I don't blame the media. I'm not a media... Hater. Yeah. 
No. Because I was a media major. <laughs> but I do feel like media wants a story. They want an interesting story. And half the time they make it up. I'm not so sure about or that. Or fill in the blanks. They I fill don't in know. the blanks. They might do that, but I just feel like that. Or sensationalize. I just feel like they don't give the complete story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we need to wrap up this podcast. We're going late, and I'm feeling really buzzy. I can tell. Really buzzy. Yeah. That's good. So this, tell me what you think of the beer that's gotten you buzzy. Guess what? What? I love this beer. I would drink it again. I would buy it again, except it is very expensive. I'm going to give it a four. Okay. I thought about giving it a four or five, but I, I don't like it that much. Okay. But this is a good beer. Yeah, I like a good quadruple. Three philosophers. I, by... I'm not. I don't. I don't taste here. Let me taste your. You're gonna try it again. Try another little sip of it. What you think? What is it? What's the deal? I mean, it definitely has the quadruple flavor. I do not taste any cherries. I don't know that the cherries are even necessary. Oh, wow. That's weird because I never, I forgot about that when you said it. I forgot that's actually part of it. I don't taste yeah. cherry at all. At all. No. So why would they would even do that? But then if you look at the bottle, it does say that it's 98% quadruple ale and 2% ale with cherries added. So yeah, yeah. 2%. Let maybe, me tell you what I up think. that percentage. I'm going to say it's very woodsy, woody, woodsy, woodsy. Okay. It's kind of oak tasting. Sure. Like some of those that we've had. Sure. It, there's no bitterness or maybe very little bitterness. There might be a little bit. There's some bitter little. in there. But I like it. It's very dark. Maybe you might call it malty, whatever. It is a fruity, even though it smelled like it was. I don't taste the, the cherry or whatever. Very caramel. Mm -hmm. Kind of, it leans towards a sweet, although it's not really sweet. Not That's sweet. a good beer. I really like that. Okay. I'm giving so it you're a giving it a four. I'm giving it a four. I'll give it, I'll give it a three. <laughs> give it a little more. No. Come on. No. Three, five. Nope. Right. You can't change me. I won't try. All right. Well, okay. A couple of things let's miss, mention about our projects. And one of our projects is our summer 2018 summer playlist. Summer and playlist. we are not going to be adding to that anymore from ourselves. But you are more than welcome to send in your selections yes. for a summer playlist. Now but until more, the 20th. But most importantly, what we need you to do is we need you to vote on those songs because right now, pretty much every song has one vote. There are some that are leaning towards a little higher, but I don't think we have 20. But so. we don't want this to be Rick and Sherry's playlist. I kind of do. I mean, we but. could do that if we wanted to do that. <laughs> but what's going to happen is that all these songs are going to have one vote each, and then we're just going to have to pick them ourselves. And I'll always pick my favorites. Same here. No one wants to hear that. But So go to the website, This Epic Disaster. Dot com, mm -hmm. And you will see a link to our summer playlist. Go mm -hmm. and vote. It's free to vote. Yeah. We and we don't collect any information. We don't care. And you can vote, vote as many times as you want. You can vote, I think, as many times you want in a 24-hour period. It might be a 48-hour period. I can't remember. But if they don't, if it doesn't let you vote again like the next day, wait another day and it will. Okay. At some point it will. But just vote for your favorites. You get 20 votes. Everybody can vote up to 20 times yep. each time you vote. And just vote for your favorites. If you if you look through that list and you're like, wait a minute, where the heck is whatever, go ahead and send it in to us. We will add it. We're not going to add any more hours because right. I feel like I put the best of my songs on there. The only thing I didn't do, I haven't put a Billy Joel on there. That's surprising. I didn't do that. Here's what I was thinking today. What? Isn't it weird? Maybe you don't have this problem. When I think of 80 songs, uh -huh. my favorite 80s songs, they're always wrapped up in summer. Why is that? Why is summer in 80s so because connected? Because in the 80s, you were still in college. Everyone was summer in So the 80s. summer meant you weren't in school. No, I was in school in the 80s. You just said I was in college. No, I, in the summer. You were no, out. I know, in the summer I wasn't. That's just, why all of the songs remind you of summer, because you were out partying and playing to those songs. I didn't party when I was in college. Well, your form of party. And I also went to summer school a lot. So, I mean, I was in school a lot, but I just feel like, because I, I was thinking today, nobody's mentioned Lionel Richie like all night long. That's a summer song. That's a summer song. There's so many songs like that. When you think about Paul Abdul or whatever, the, the, all of those 80s songs, typically 80s songs, it's just you feel like you're in summer outfits. That's I don't know. True. I do. Okay. I don't know. All right, so let's wrap this up because you are getting a little. Uh, I'm not. You just got done saying you were. I was lying. Ruth Buzzy. <laughs> so, okay. Anyways, Wait. you can find us uh, at lifeinakiltpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash. I'm sorry, did I just say life in a kilt? You did. 
That's not this podcast. That's an old podcast we used to do. We're at This Epic Disaster. And you said I was drunk. Dot com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash this epic disaster. We're also on Instagram and Twitter. And we have presents. For we got people. stickers. We have free stickers. We give out these stickers to anybody who wants. We've already given out a bunch of them. Yeah. I, I've mailed them out to yeah. people. All you got to do is just uh, send us an email. We, it, you don't have to tell us who you are. Just say, I want stickers. Give this us your mailing address. address. We'll put them in the mail and send them to you. And off they go. And this is a secret. Not everybody knows this secret. secret. I'm not even sure that I should be telling it, but what I will. Is it? What is it? If you are a listener and you want a nickname... We will give you a nickname. We're so good at it. And you could give your own nickname. Just call us and say, hey, I'm John, and I want to be John. If you, if you send us an email and we're going to read it, say, if you reference me, reference me as... That's exactly right. You know, Mystique or whatever. Because everybody who listens for the show to this show, we feel like, needs to have a, a nickname. Yep. I don't know why, but we do. So you can you can get free stickers and a free nickname, but at least get the stickers. Just send us an email. We will send them to you for free. We want to ask for anything. We won't. We don't put your email on a. At least not right now. We don't. We put it on a uh, any kind of mailing list. We don't sell it or whatever. We just we'll send it out to you. We don't care. I think that uh, okay. Remember Donnie? Yes. With the underwear. Yes. I think he should be underwear Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of perverted. <laughs> Uh, there could be more to it than that. <laughs> Don Johns. Yes. Don Johns. Yes. That's that's no. that's who no. he should be. He should be Don Johns. Donnie Whitey. No, that's bad. Long no, Dons. <laughs> Long Dons. Long Dons. <laughs> Long Dons. Um, but yeah, we're we're actually better than uh, than that at giving out nicknames, and you could get a free one. So again, uh, this epic disaster at gmail.com. That's mm-hmm. our email address. We are at thisepicdisaster.com. That's our, our regular. Uh, and here's here's something. I might be switching our website host. Uh-huh. So we might be, our website might go down here in the next few weekends. But you can always find us on well, Facebook. Well, then how are people going to vote? It will be after the vote, I'm sure. But okay, so after us, the 20th. Yes. Okay. But we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram, as as you know. Uh-huh. And, but we like to hear from people. Now, here's something we're thinking of doing. What? I'm going to throw this out. We did this on the Life in a Kilt podcast. And and now that the Life in a Kilt podcast is, is kind of in hiatus, mm-hmm. we're going to do it here. Remember last year we did um, Fourth of July? Yes. I want to do a live broadcast of this podcast on Fourth of July. Okay, let's do it. So... I, there's a there's a little bit of a possibility I might be out of town if that happens. Then we I can't, can't do it. I can't do it. But if we're here, we'll do it. Okay. And then the way it works is we'll do the live broadcast. Whether you listen or not, we don't care. We're going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you can you can respond to us. We'll try to respond back uh, on the Fourth of July. It'll be the Fourth of July, but this is the Fourth of July, and so we will we will respond back to you. But um, then we will videotape it and we'll put the videotape online so if you don't if i mean not videotape but the video <laughs> if you don't see us do the recording you get to watch it you later. can watch it later right but 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 if you do see it live you can actually send us questions and we'll try to read them and and we'll we'll respond. just do it through facebook live and we'll be nude no no oh nope. is that not this one no okay that's Sorry. that's our other podcast we won't but we'll do we'll just do the regular thing zap mondo we'll do some zap mondo We'll do the beer, live beer review. I I think think. you've had enough beer for today. Oh, I have not. Okay. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope you're excited about all these upcoming things like we are. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Definitely will. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.